Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and as the title of the video says, this was my first attempt at creating a watercolor galaxy. I had my um, low Cornell watercolor sitting out from the previous card I had made. I actually made this background in the middle of the other one. I was all over the place the last few days. <laughs> and I got some couple pieces of Canson XL watercolor paper since my masonite board was big enough. I cut down two pieces of the watercolor paper and I'm just using some painter's tape to hold them into place because I thought while I'm experimenting I might as well do two pieces at once and because if one doesn't turn out or whatever or I'll have two. So I'm totally experimenting here. I've watched all sorts of videos, some from paper crafters, a lot of just watercolor artists doing the whole galaxy background and it was high time for me to just do it myself. This is one of those sorts of things where you just need to do it and play with it and experiment. So that's what I did. I started off with some clean clear water and, and a, I have a really big brush. This is a size 12. This is a Winsor & Newton Cotman brush, I think. And it's a size 12, so it's a big brush. And I started with some clean clear water and then I just started dropping in colors. So I was using pinks and purples, aquas and some blues. And not being particular about it, I did them, each one I did differently and kind of let the colors blend into each other and just played with it. And then I let that first layer dry. I actually heat it, I dried it with my heat tool just to get it dry faster. And then I added in a second layer just to really intensify the colors. Um, again, experimenting, totally experimenting. I will say like these watercolors, I've shown in a lot of videos. These are great, you know, because they're so cheap. Um, they work for this technique. I, I end up finishing the card with it. I will say though, now that I've done it, I finished the card, everything, doing this many layers of color because these watercolors are so cheap, like they're very chalky, which I've mentioned in other videos, and that's fine. But when you do this many layers of color and then you are handling it, like, you know, I'll show later, I die cut it, I do this, I do that. Um, the chalkiness, it really starts to rub off. It actually comes off a bit here and there. So it is fun to play with, but I'm I'm really curious to try this technique with some inks and with other watercolors, like more professional watercolors to see how it works. So anyway, I did the layers of color and then I go in and add the black and this is where it starts looking like a hot mess. <laughs> and if I hadn't had, you know, I was like, I knew I needed to stick it out to the end. Um, but at this point I was like, oh, this looks awful. It's so, it just looks awful. But I was like, I know it'll look, you know, I have at the very least, I gotta stick with it till the very end because maybe I can salvage this. So I added in the layers of the black, left some areas lighter, some areas darker, um, left some of the color, you know, exposed, some of it I mixed, and then I let it completely dry. And then this is the part that really brings it all together is the white. And I'm using some Copic white because I know the white in this watercolor kit is not very um, intense and I wanted it to be white. So I'm using some Copic white and I'm just mixing it up with some water and loading up um, a cheaper paintbrush, a smaller paintbrush with that. And then I start tapping it against my fingers to get all these splotches. And that's what really starts to make this look more like the galaxy, like it's supposed to. So I started with that and I was like, uh, it's not enough. Like these little splatters, they're too big. It's, you know, it needs more um, like a mist almost. So I grabbed an old toothbrush and ran that against my thumbnail and that's what created the perfect little mist. So I've got the splatters from the brush and the mist from the toothbrush and that created, you know, a decent enough galaxy. Right? When I first, like when it was first done, I still wasn't a big fan of it, but I left it, let it sit to dry, and I came back to it later in the day, and I was like, actually, I, I can work with this. I'm okay with it. <laughs> so not bad for my first attempt, but I'm definitely gonna have to play around with it some more. So it was completely dry at this point, so I peeled off all the tape, and with painter's tape, it works it works best to pull it against itself so that you don't tear your cardstock. And then I ran one of these pieces through my die cut machine with the largest die from the MFT Blueprints One Dynamics to trim off those edges. And then I ran it through again. This is with the new Stacked Stars die from Simon Says Stamp. So I ran that through. My initial thought was to add like layers of the Stacked Stars on top of the galaxy background, but I couldn't decide and I really wanted to create a shaker card. So I ran that through first with that. And then I ran that die through a second time, this time with some black glitter cardstock for my stash. And I used a metal adapter plate in my sandwich stack just to give it that little extra bit of oomph to get it to cut through this glitter cardstock. And you can see and I'm going to inlay it here. Now I could have gone with like silver or gold. I did think of that, but I kind of wanted to go with the black shimmer because I didn't want these stars to stand out as much because I'm creating a shaker. But then after I did that, I was like, crap, how am I going to adhere all of this to my transparency? 
and decided the easiest way to do this was to run it through my little Xyron Creative Station light. So I ran it through with the glitter cardstock that was die cut inlaid in there, just making sure everything was still lined up. And then I rubbed that really, really well to pick up all that adhesive on the plastic backing sheet here. So I used my Teflon bone folder, my fingers to try and pick up as much of that excess adhesive as I possibly could. So I peeled that off and then I'm able to peel off um, this watercolor piece with the die cut inlay and it all comes off as one. So it's all coated in adhesive, in permanent adhesive. And then I'm able to just lay my transparency over that. This, I have a box of transparencies. I've had them for years. Um, any clear, like clear packaging would work. Anything like that would work. And so I adhered all that. So then I've created my, the front of my shaker card. So I'm using some Scotch uh, foam tape here and I'm just about done this roll. I literally have, I think two inches left now after making this card. Thankfully I have a backup, always have a backup. So um, I did a layer of foam tape and on the edges because the stars get a little bit closer to the edge, I cut the foam tape in half and I do two layers of this. So I get everything lined up. Um, and try to get the foam tape spaced as close together as possible. And then I peel off the backing and add a second layer of foam tape. It just depends on what you're using. Usually when I create shaker cards like this, I usually do two layers. Um, it does make the card thicker obviously, but it gives you that extra space for things to really shake properly. So I did two layers there, peeled off all the backing, and then I have some sort of metallic color, multicolored sequins for my stash. I thought those would be really perfect because they kind of go with the, you know, the colors I use to create the galaxy, all that. So I just dumped um, a bunch of those into the window I'd created. And then I backed that with a piece of white cardstock because that just made it a lot easier than trying to get this lined up on the card itself. So again, it adds that little extra layer, but usually cards like this I hand deliver or I would put in a padded envelope if I'm mailing it. So that just makes things a lot more convenient. So once I'd done that, I needed to add a sentiment. So I die cut some pink cardstock with one of the stitched flags dies from Simon Says Stamp and ran it through a second time to get that the straight edge stitched as well. And I'd measured it to fit. This is a sentiment from the new Shine On stamp set. And I coated the cardstock with some anti-static powder first. And then I inked up the sentiment with Versamark ink and stamped that onto um, my little die cut flag and then I'm holding it with tweezers because I don't have a whole lot of room here and holding it with tweezers and coating it with some detail white embossing powder and then I'm going to use my heat tool to melt the embossing powder and the um, tweezers just keep me from burning my fingers when it's this small of a piece because this tool does get very hot. So once I'm done with that, I'm gonna um, adhere that directly to the front of the card with some ATG adhesive. So it's nice and flat to that. And then I decided I still had, I kept all the little stars that were left over from die cutting um, these original pieces. And I just started adhering some of the black glittered tiny stars that were left over. You don't see them as much on the video, but they kind of show up nicely on the card and yet aren't too distracting since I've got, you know, the galaxy background and the sequins and all that going on. So this just gave it a little extra something without being total overkill. <laughs> so put those into place with some multimedia matte adhesive. And then I backed this with some more Scotch ATG um, adhesive and adhere that to my card base, which is a standard A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I had this other leftover die cut from cutting the galaxy background. And I decided to use that to decorate the inside of my card. So I ran this through my die or through my little um, creative station here, my little Xyron, and did the same thing. Rubbed it really, really well with my fingers and my bone folder to try and pick up all that excess adhesive. Just makes things a lot easier so it's not as gummed up when you peel it all apart because there's so many little openings here. And then yeah, peeled off the plastic and then peeled off the die cut so it's coated in adhesive. And then that way I can just lay that on the inside of my card and then I'm going to um, get that into place, press it down really well, and then just flip it over and use my scissors to trim off all the pieces that are hanging off the edge of the card. And I decided to leave it at that, that, not stamp any sentiments. It just kind of gives um, enough space to write to the recipient. And that's all there was to it. So I will have a link below the video to my blog post. It'll have pictures of the card as well as picture links of all the supplies used. All that info is in the description box below the video. So check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs up and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys very soon in the next one. Bye.